Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, what's going on? This is Reggie Williams, your Encompass rep. And today's program, today's block on my block, today on my block, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about uh, tried and true flippers dream come true the lg front load set uh the market is full of them um and they're flippers dream because you can get them they clean up well uh comment especially once you know the common issues and you can sell them for about anywhere from as low as six hundred dollars as high as eight hundred dollars um, and I'm sure somebody out there might be getting a little more, but depends how fast you want to move it in your market. So <clears throat> before we get into that, let's uh, get into, let's, let's welcome anyone that is new to the Power Block. Uh, if you stumbled on this live feed or you stumbled on a replay, uh, thank you for being here. And let me tell you what it's all about. What is the block? Well, the power block is three YouTube channels, one powerful block of appliance industry talk. So you got myself, Reggie, your encompass rep uh, at seven o'clock, sometimes 645, depends. <laughs> um, and you'll have Mona Sims with SSG Appliance Academy and Tim Burdick on at 730. And then you got the OG Mike Sneed at eight o'clock with Appliance Boot Camp. Uh, and so, if you're still confused on who the block is, uh, let's go to Screen Share Kung Fu and we're going to give you a breakdown uh, about what we offer. Well, Encompass, obviously, we're a uh, one of the nation's largest parts distributors. Uh, we're the most authorized distributor in the country. Um, and we'll have, you know, we're number one for Medea parts, number one distributor in the country for Medea, uh, Samsung, LG, uh, and quite a few. Um, depends on who you use. Obviously, we're big with Whirlpool. You know, we got the big dog, Whirlpool. Um, but some of, the, some of those other uh, manufacturers that uh, you may have, higher time getting parts from, we have them. Um, so if you do need an Encompass account, if you are buying your parts wholesale uh, without logging in, you need an account. Uh, if, you are, if you are an appliance servicer, you need an account. Um, so I made that easy for you. A link is in the description. It's called a hello sign link is in the description. Check that out. Um, and that link uh, will link you towards an application that's filled out online. Quick, easy, uh, it does ask a million questions that does not disqualify you. We're easy going. We just want you to be a servicer. So we don't, we do not, listen, we do not require, Encompass does not require EIN numbers, uh, um, LLCs, none of that stuff, right? Uh, proof that you are a servicer is the fact that you are buying multiple parts monthly, right? And speaking of that, there's no minimums. Um, so we uh, definitely help you get going, uh, make the transitions easy. Uh, our website is very, very user friendly. Uh, any questions, don't forget to L-O-Y-R. L-O-Y-R. Lean on your rep. My information is in the description. Uh, let me get my banner going because every time I say that, it reminds me of that. So let's get the banner going. Boom. Uh why my name not showing up? Let's see why that's not going. Uh, hang on, let me go in. Let me let me say something here on Linktree. I can't kind of see because it's minimized, but uh, oh yeah. Also, I was trying to get some music going. Let's see if that's the. I think I might add up, take up too much. Yep, a little background music. A little background music. Nice and low. All right. Hopefully, that don't, don't eat up my my uh, <laughs> data here. Slow me down. 
so uh no what are you looking at right right on the screen right on the screen is training 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 uh big need in the industry right now uh people want to you, you got to keep your pencil sharp uh these machines change all the time they add stuff they hide screws stay up to date with encompass virtual training with the oracle of appliance repair tim burdick highly sought after manufacturer uh certified trainer uh uh and not only that i mean his dad works for a manufacturer so <laughs> works for ge so you know it, it, it's handed down so uh he is the best of the best and he does our virtual training so just be sure to go into um uh, encompass website or you uh, freeze the video here and copy this link solutions.encompass uh slash training uh dash virtual um to check out our training schedule uh it's two days it's only 25 dollars total um uh, there's no way you can't watch that and i get something out of it definitely keeps your pencil sharp uh medium to advanced uh level classes so now if you know someone that is not medium to advanced level they probably need some hands-on uh so that's what the second leg of the block is about ssg appliance academy mona sims uh ssg is hands-on in georgia uh so and i'm sure they're, they're probably willing to travel too for you to get the right amount of text together uh so ssg appliance academy you go to ssg appliance academy.com uh there's a two week hands-on uh basic fundamentals uh, course on appliance repair and also a weekend that's right a weekend seal systems class uh so check that out also mike sneed running anchor at eight o'clock appliance boot camp check them out appliancebootcamp.com but you know you, you go to the link tree description to go to the channels but this is their websites. Uh, Appliance Bootcamp. Uh, Mike does hands-on. He does his online content. Uh, and something that's unique and special about Mike in Appliance Bootcamp is the blueprint. The blueprint is a formula, a, a tried and true formula to stay in business by following the steps of the formula find that out talk to mike uh at eight o'clock or just go on to his website here appliance bootcamp now i just want to give a shout out again to uh one of my guests i had on my show uh barry with um and so he does he has this restoration product that removes scratches deep scratches from stainless steel and part of the kit also tests it to make sure there's no coating um, on there that you're getting straight, you know. And, and, and he also uh, has actual classes. Once you go pro with this stuff, it actually uh, teach you on how to do this, how to how to use it uh, in the most efficient way. So so many different packages. But go to restorationartex.com and put in discount code. L-O-Y-R, which stands for Lean On Your Rep, L-O-Y-R, for a 10% off on Barry's uh, product. And yeah, this stuff, I mean, I hate, this, I hate this sound like an infomercial, but this stuff pays for itself. Uh, it pays for itself by giving you some insurance, right, if you, you, you text scratches the fridge on a call, or uh, it's an excellent upsell excellent way to upsell your customers um it, it's hard not to upsell somebody on moving a scratch from the refrigerator uh if you have a scratch and dent store uh heck if you sell new appliances right they're in your showroom uh these your, your machines are constantly getting moved uh mystery scratches from customers or uh employees uh if uh, a scratch substantially lowers the value of your stainless steel product uh so berries you know so yeah check this out man uh it's awesome uh and what we got next skills usa yeah check out skills usa 
uh, Skills USA. So if you, if you you get to a point where you're like, man, this business is so great. I wish they they taught this stuff more. Uh, I wish they taught skill trades more. They do. There's this program here called Skills USA, and Skills USA uh, is a nonprofit organization, uh, and it's basically the Olympics of uh, of skill trades. Uh, the RCAT program is is focused on appliance repair, appliance refrigeration. So y'all check out the website, man. And y'all give them as much the support as you can. Uh, the actual finals is held in Atlanta, Georgia, once a year. Uh, I believe they have a contract for the next three years because, you know, that's how Atlanta does it, man. We, we seal deals. <laughs> Here in the A. Um, <clears throat> this is the topic at hand. Let me let me get some water. Y'all get ready. Y'all get ready for this. Let me turn the music down a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tell you why I like this so much. Un momento. There you go. Turn it down. It's a tad. You can barely hear it, but it's all right. Um, oh yeah, it's too low. Hang on. Seven. So, what is this? Uh, this is an LG front load set. Uh, it's older, it's been made, you know, they made these a long time. And this set is, was, was man, this, I, I would say LG front loaders and Frigidaire uh, slash Kenmore laundry centers. Man, money in the bank. <laughs> So I'm, I'm definitely probably going to end up doing a show on the laundry centers. Um, and so what this does, try to look at my time. Uh, and so well, I'm going to break down, break down the washer and the dryer. Uh, so this is good. Uh, if you are doing COD work, you probably won't see a lot of this under warranty. Um, uh, home warranties, I don't know. Uh, COD work. And with these, these, these are is so I rarely come across one of these with a bad bearing. That's almost always the first issue with front load washers. I don't care what brand it is. Uh, first thing you do, especially if you're doing this for flipping, you spin that tub, man, and see if that thing is, is has a bad bearing. Uh, it's gonna be some play, right? Because it's on stabilizers, but I mean, you know, a bad bearing. Uh, when you see, you basically look at the 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 outer tub. You usually can see a plastic ring in there. That's the outer tub. And that metal tub, you spin it, and you start to see the wobble. Those things, <laughs> that'll be that'll be the litmus test for that. Uh, so these, uh, I would sell them anywhere from six to eight hundred dollars, between six and eight hundred dollars. Uh, this particular seller, I don't know, it's confusing. He's got three hundred dollars in the ad, but in the description it says eight, so maybe he lowered them. Uh, Looks like he's moving out of town, uh, so maybe he lowered the price because it's getting down, getting down to uh, the nitty gritty here for him on time. Uh, so, uh, this is something in, in back in the day when I was flipping, I would buy, uh, one red flag here is you got the little water stain here, not too much of a bit red flag. Um, uh, maybe that, that tub seal is bad. That boot might be bad. Might have a rip in it, or that could just come to opening the door. Uh, uh, you know, and sometimes it come from here, this laundry drawer. So that water will come down into this seal here, into this frame, and then it will leak out right here. So something that happens to opening this drawer up or. It's not closed or, you know, you never know what people do. <laughs> but I'll, I'll definitely expect a tub seal. Sometimes the glass will have dirt on it and that will break the seal. And so that water will trickle down. Um, so I'm going to break down the common. So if you're flipping or you just, you know, you want to learn how to fix these things. Uh, I'm going to break it down. Uh, I'm not going to go over the codes. I've never been much of a code guy. I usually a, a look and inspect. Uh, codes are good for computer issues and board issues on this particular machine. Um, I mean, I would ask the customer about it, but I would usually, I like to see them. I, I, I just go off the symptoms, <laughs> you know, not draining, whatever. I, I usually go off, that's the type of tech I was, but uh, on these these older machines, because a lot of them, you know, they're not as computerized as a newer. Um, so let's break it down, right? So we are, we're here on Encompass and we're at the website. And you've got some commonly purchased uh, parts. Let's break this down. So let's look at some of the commonly purchased parts. I usually don't like clicking on stuff when I'm live. 
Uh, I completely understand why this is probably a common per. First of all, let's let's. I always got to do a disclaimer. I am not logged in, so this is showing retail pricing. This is not wholesale pricing. If you want to know how much your wholesale pricing is on this item, log into your account and check it out. Um, but I can completely see why this may be a commonly ordered item because, man, when you are working on these things, for some reason, this thing disappears. Like I spent <laughs> I spent like 20 minutes one time looking for this thing. I was like, man, I swear I took it off, put it next to me. I don't know where it went. <laughs> um that or sometimes they just get gross uh this is the, the coin trap they call it um it's a filter whatever you want to call it um that goes on the pump assembly and this filter man so you, yeah you definitely I, I see why that's that's a that's a that's on here because <laughs> you would think like that doesn't break why would somebody have that on there uh yeah you lose them in or they just get gross you know they get hairpins in them and all that stuff uh, all right, so this is the noise filter. Uh, so this noise filter sometimes will go bad. Uh, I've seen like the silicone in here, black uh, from a burned out part. Uh, usually uh, when I find this goes bad, in my experience, uh, you have an issue with power because the, uh, the power actually goes through this noise filter. So this is... Something you, you can kind of test um, if you got to, you know, if you're sophisticated enough. Uh, but usually, when this thing is all black on the inside, that's usually an indicator that that noise filter is bad. Um, and usually, a no power uh, or a, a the board, no power to the board. Sometimes it's that noise filter. Um, that can be tricky though. So that's not a one. That's not a one size solution with that symptom with no power. Uh, sometimes that those boards go bad a lot on this particular machine. Um, so it's usually between a noise filter and that, uh, which is usually the issue. Uh, they also have a main control board too. So let's go to the breakdown. Let's go, let's go to the schematics. Um, actually, you know, instead of schematics on this one, let's just look at the parts. Cause like everything I'm talking about is like right here. Um, bearings. I rarely ever fix the bearing on these things. So I won't worry about that too much. Uh, these elbows let's talk about that elbows i've seen these go bad uh, it's actually easy for me to talk about this the symptoms by looking at these parts uh this elbow goes to the tub this part goes to the tub this part well this part goes to i think this part goes to the tub the other part goes to the drain uh and this might oh you know what? this might be the air one uh, let's see that might be for the air on top So if you have a leak issue, right, um, it's rare, but I've seen these things have a leak. This may be the one going from the tub. I think this was going from the tub to the fil to the pump. Uh, and you'll see some of the obstruction poking through these holes. So now when, they, when you hear they're saying they don't build them like they used to, uh, I'm not a big fan of that mentality, but uh, I mean, there's some truth to it, but it, things are just different. We use our machines different than we used to in the past. I think we got, we definitely have more clothes than you've seen back in like the uh, 80s and, you know, the 70s. Uh, when those old machines they're talking about were, were, were sturdy. Um, but also the materials were different. So like with this one, you've got a thick rubber hose. I mean, the rubber hose used to be a lot thicker. So these are a little thinner, right? And because they rarely ever go bad. Uh, so you don't need a big old thick, you know, inch, one inch hose, right? Uh, but one of the issues is sometimes you get things sticking through these. You get like a, a nail or uh, I've seen nails pass through these things, but if it lands the right way and maybe something else hits it, a nail or something will you see poking through here and you'll see a hole uh, here, right? Or if there's a rotor issue on the repair, uh, you'll see that also. So let's get to the main components. Um, so one of the main components you'll see, uh, you have an issue with is oh, there's the shipping boats. <laughs> y'all see my uh, one video I did, uh, one live I did shipping boats. So you get vibrations, heavy vibrations. Uh, that is usually caused by shipping boats and still being, still being in the, the machine. Um, so let's go to, instead of doing it, I'm sorry, let's do it this way. Let's go to. 
That's when I come to science, but a pump. So here's a pump, right? So a uh, big issue with front loaders, universal, uh, is that the pumps are clogged, right? So this is the pump assembly. Uh, I've seen some of these cracked and, and broken. Uh, I think they fixed that. But there are a certain kind that has like a hole in the same spot. It's like a weak, weak point on it. So you see a leak there. But uh, you have a recirculation pump on some of these, or some of these have a drain pump. And a recirculation pump, I rarely ever had to change those. Uh, but the so let's go to the drain pump. Uh, so we get a call, it's not draining. Uh, you go in and you put it on drain, right? So the nice thing about LG washers is that you can put them directly on drain by clicking spin. So what you do is, here's a trick. So you go to the LG washer, you uh, turn it on, and you put it right, you, you click spin. You hit the spin button, it automatically will start to drain and go into the spin cycle. Uh, so you, you can't do that because it'll it'll rinse. But LG is nice. You, it, it, usually, most of them have a spin button. You hit that spin button, and that will put it on spin. I, was, I almost do that almost every time. It's almost automatic when I'm working on this this washer. Um, so the two biggest repairs on this will be uh, this is top of the, the two biggest. It will be this drain pump being clogged, right? Um, if you a way of testing a pump is to use your finger. Uh, take that pump off, you spin it, it should have a bounce, like almost like there's rubber bands attached to it or something. It should have like a, a spring, a resistance, and then a release, and a big springing action. If you can turn that pump easily with your finger all the way around, that pump is bad. Uh, a pump is good when you can turn it, and it's resistance, and it kind of bounces like a rubber band. Like, like I was, I, y'all remember those paper, those little airplanes we used to play with as kids that had a little rubber band pro propellers? Yeah, it'll feel like that, and then when you release it, it feels like that in a way, kind of. <laughs> uh, but definitely, if it spins all the way around easily, that pump is bad. That's a good way of testing it. Uh, another indication is that the pump is extremely hot. Uh, sometimes that's a, a, a sign of a bad pump in a washer. Um, so let's go to the second common issue with this washer is this water valves. Uh, sometimes the hot, but almost always, uh, sorry, we got this upside down, but uh, the, the valves. So the other side of the valve, so these are electromagnetic uh, valves. Um, so it's electrified and it releases the water. Uh, those hammers inside and sometimes those hammers will, will bust out. And so on the top of these valves here, you'll see rust or you'll see water. Very, very common. So if you go on a call on an LG washer and it has a leak and you see it coming from the back, almost always, I, mean, I would almost go ahead and bring the part with you. <laughs> it's these valves. Um, only time I've seen a leak on an LG washer was those valves. Other than that, I mean, sometimes you'll have a door boot with a rip in it um, or you'll have that little hole, little, little hole punch, punched in the... Uh, in one of the hoses. Um, almost always it's this, right? So this, and also I would replace the hoses while you're at it, because you gotta disconnect the hoses, uh, the, the fill hoses. So let's recap, LG washer, mold, uh, so this LG washer, let's go back. Uh, common issues, clogged up pump. Uh, so hey, is water in my, in my, in my washer? Uh, it won't drain. Most likely it's clogged up pump. Um, I will almost always, I wouldn't drain it from here. I mean, you can, but I would, I have a, a hose clamp, um, uh, pliers that clamps the hoses, the hose. And so I would put that on and then I would open this up and that just the access water would come out. Um, which is still sometimes a significant amount because you got some in the, the drain, uh, hose still, um, and some coming, you know, there's some that's already in there. Uh, but not probably no more than a cup full, I would say. Um, so yeah, so we got the so we got the pump, and you have the water inlet valves uh, leaking. 
And then you will have power issues, which usually it'll be that noise filter board or the touchpad here. So, um, and that is something that will require looking at codes and um, tracing the uh, line of power. So using your voltmeter to see what's getting power and what's not. So that's going to be a little bit more of extensive repair. Uh, sometimes these, the knobs, the buttons, the little, the contacts could be bad too. I've seen that where you take that board apart and this contacts are just broken or bad. Um, so that's that. Let's go on to the dryer. Okay, not yet for that. All right, hang on. All right, there we go. Let's go to the dryer. Uh, let's do take a break. Don't forget, look in the description. Uh, if you do not have an Encompass account, if you're buying parts from Encompass and you're not logging in, you're paying retail. You don't have to do that uh, if you're a servicer. Uh, sign up. Um, the Look in the description. There is a link to sign up for it. Look just like this when you click on it. After you click the link, and you go ahead and sign up for a wholesale account to Encompass. Uh, if you don't have certain things, don't worry about it. It does not disqualify you. Just put NA. Uh, there's a credit application that is optional. Leave that blank or just put NA. Um, and we'll get you hooked up. All right. Any questions, don't forget to look at the uh, at the bottom. That's my information, my email address, and my phone number uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, so let's go to the dryer. Uh, LG dryer, you're going to have common issues right now. Bianchi, you fix it. I, I, I can honestly say almost all front load dryers look the same on the inside. Uh, do I have a picture on the inside? Let me see. Yep, boom. Now, this one, because the probably because of the, the, the three prongs on here, but uh, most of them is two. And this is how camera dryers look, Samsung dryers look. LG dryers. <laughs> uh, most of the big boys, uh, not so much GE, not GE, but uh, this is pretty much what you're going to see. Frigidaire, I think Frigidaire might be on the other side. No, I don't know. Uh, but this is how they look. And so I call this element a shotgun element because <laughs> it's long, right? Uh, and you're going to have a, um, uh, your, uh, thermal fuse, your high limit fuse. We all have different names for these things. Uh, so I'll simplify it. This is like, I would say your heat regulator. As, as, as In layman's terms, this fuse here uh, regulates the heat. I'm going to get like a pointer one day. Uh, this fuse regulates the heat uh, of the element. So if you see that little that sticker, that sticker tells you two numbers on there. And the, the lower number is where... Uh, it is the, the so it's a range on what the uh, heating element is going to be at, right? According to you know once it contacts this, this fuse, um, so it stays within that range. So it cuts off once it gets to the lower number. It uh, no, I'm sorry, it cuts off when it gets to the higher number, and cuts back on when it gets to the lower number as it cools off, right? So it regulates the heat inside that element, and these will get worn out if there's like a clogged air duct or something like that. Because I mean that thing is you know. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, and how you test these is I usually put it, you can put it on a stove uh, with your pliers, hold it with your pliers, put it on a stove, um, or you put a lighter to it. I always carry a lighter in my tube bag. I'll put a lighter to it, uh, wait for the click test and see you know, if, if it clicks with the lighter on there, you should have no continuity, um, because it hits that hit the high limit, a higher limit. Uh, and then as it cools, it'll click again, and then you should have continuity between these two leads. Um, best way to test that. And you should almost always change this if this goes out. So this is your high limit, right? So what this will do is this will, so if this fuse fails, this one will trigger. Uh, so this, this high limit here is rated at a higher, so it, it triggers at a higher temperature than your heat regulator over here, right? Um, and so that's your backup. And so you should almost never just change this. So this is like a smoke detector, I call it. <laughs> that's a bad analogy, but we talk about heat. 
but uh, it's a smoke detector, right? In, in a sense, or a check engine light saying, hey, something's wrong, right? You don't go to the uh, mechanic and say, hey, turn off my check engine light. It ain't working. It came on by mistake. No, it's telling you something wrong. So um, with your dryer, so with uh, LG dryers, I I've never really had any issue. Uh, Samsung usually, so this, this, this uh, roller here usually goes bad. And it's replaced by one with actual bearing on it instead of metal sliding on metal it's, it's an actual ball bearing uh which is nice but we, on your dryers uh your heating element uh obviously uh, something that you have to test it will go bad um these 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 three prong uh three lead heating elements i, I rarely ever have an issue out of them but i know they're pretty expensive to replace but i already have a, rarely ever have an issue out of them um and you got to learn how to test for continuity on these. I, 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 I believe, if my memory serves me right, that middle one is the main one, and then all of them connect to that. I think, but well, one of them is a the main, and you just kind of, you know, and then two of them are detached. Uh, but they're different heat settings, right? Um, so you've got that your roller over here. Um, always a good idea to take this off. Um, you never want to put grease on these things because it'll, it'll catch all the lint in the hair. Um, but what I did was I will wipe it. I'll put motor oil on a towel, paper towel, and I'll wipe it with motor oil because motor oil is uh, rated for higher temperatures um, and it's, it's designed to bond to metal. So I always thought that was best. Some people use some di different lubes and stuff like that, but I feel like motor oil is almost best for me to put on these things. Some people don't put nothing to keep them dry. So each his own. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty simple for the, the, the dryer uh aspect of this um oh so this this is an illustration i meant to show during a washer that's what that was oh, i just had this miss in the wrong spot so oh yeah so in the washers right now i rarely ever seen a bad bearing in an lg washer uh some samsung's had issues with the bearing being corroded uh you know there's you know they, they say m they say the enzymes and the detergent does it uh there's animal fats and the detergent uh so there's some, you know, one of my philosophies is powder detergent. Sometimes you see powder detergent is caked up on these things. Uh, when you take them off, when you take them out, you disconnect them. Um, there's a number of different reasons. Uh, what, a good prevention method is white vinegar. Uh, white vinegar will, eat, will help keep that thing going strong and clean. And here's an illustration of one that's corroded and broke. Uh, and usually you'll, you'll get a wobble. Right when that happens, um, so very common on any front loader. So, uh, but I, just don't, I don't have said a, a lot on the old LG ones. Um, so yeah, and so dryers. Um, let's go back to the illustration. Uh, this is an Encompass schematic. Nice thing about Encompass schematic is you can go ahead and just click on the part, right, and boom. Oh, yeah. And boom, it's automatically on the side. No hunting for it, right? Usually you got to squint try to see what the number is and all that. You got none of that, right? And it blows up for you. And you just click it, add it to your cart. All right? Click, add it to your cart. Uh, blower wheel. So for uh, LG dryer, right? So this is the dryer. You get elements. Um, the fins, make sure your fins are clean. When you open this thing up, I almost always clean this part out. Let's look at it. This is the uh, the lint screen housing duct. Uh, in almost uh, almost any front loader, no matter what brand or no matter what manufacturer, man, y'all should be cleaning that. You taking it off anyway? Clean that thing. Back it out. Hey, if you don't want to do it, give it to the the uh, your customer. They'll do it. They'll do it proudly. <laughs> Uh, some of them will go too far. They try to put it in the wall and water. Not they don't want to do that. All that. Uh, but you all open up a can of worms when you do that. They be like, "Oh, can I get the rest of it?" <laughs> Next thing you know, they're for like extra thirty minutes. They're detailing their dryer. Uh, yeah. So you got that. Uh, we got the the, the element. Uh, sometimes the felt here will go bad. Uh, that's a belt. Um, sometimes the felt on a dryer drum. Some of that have felt. Uh, depends on the design, because uh, sometimes it's on the bulkhead. 
Uh, but that felt is, is especially on any dryer. If you get a lot of coins down there, you see a lot of coins, socks, and clothes down there, then it, it could be either the felt is bad or those rollers could be worn. You need to replace the rollers, right? So you're replacing war rollers and just some general maintenance that belt replace. Where belts are pretty strong. They usually snap by something else. Something else usually makes them snap. Uh, bad some issue with the roller or something. Uh, another upgrade, upsell. You know, I was talking about upsells. Uh, one of my videos. Um, the fins. Here we go. So the fins here. We call it lifters. Okay. Okay. And that's another good ups of gyre maintenance because when you hear that that drum turn and you hear those coins <laughs> inside these fins, you know you point out to your customer, hey, you see that noise? I can get rid of that noise. And part of the, the maintenance package I'm gonna give you. Uh, so you can include that in whatever, whatever else you're upselling. Say, hey, I'll take the you know you take the fins off, you clean them out, get the coins out of there, uh, keep it from making that racket, make it a much quieter dryer. Um, but dryers are it's pretty simple, man. Uh, LG dryers. Only issues I ever had was uh, heating element. I mean, very rare I had issues with a, a LG dryer. Uh, if it was, it because I needed a new heating element. Uh, and that was usually caused by neglect from the, the customer on uh, either bad air ducts or that thing's pushed too far against the wall or you're trying to squeeze into a small space, which looked like that picture was, was like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, y'all, uh, th that's all I got. That's all I got. If I miss something, y'all let me know. Um, I rarely, rarely ever had issues with LG dryer boards. Uh, the older Kenmore's had issues. I know that. Um, but I rarely ever had issues with those things. So, y'all, uh, any questions, put it in the description. Um, I'll try to answer them. You know, even if you're watching the rebroadcast, I'll still get comments. I try to answer them. Um, that's all. That's all. That's all I got, man. LG, man. This is my. I. I. I, I, I love flipping those things. Um, matter of fact, I got a video on my channel of me flipping one. I think I bought for like two hundred bucks and sold it for eight or some eight hundred dollars. Um, it sh showed me dragging them up the stairs with my dolly. Yeah, look at that video. Uh, so that's that's where we at. Uh, so y'all go go ahead. Y'all had go ahead and go over to Mona Sims SSG Appliance Academy. Um, go to the description of this video, click on the link tree, and you go over to Mona's page um, after Mona, 8 o'clock. You do the same thing. Go to my description, go to her description. The link tree link is in there, and you click on Appliance Boot Camp. Um, this is Reggie, man. And, uh, you know, oh, one thing I forgot to mention about those machines. Um, don't forget, uh, when you look at those machines, L O. Y R lean on your rep. If you ever need anything, I am Reggie, your encompass rep. My number and email is below. And if you have questions about your account, uh, if you're an account holder and there's an issue with, uh, you know, your, your order, whatever it is, uh, let me know and I'll hook you up. Um, if you have a gripe with encompass, Lean on your rep. Let me know. Um, L-O-Y-R. Lean on your rep. Y'all get over to Moni and Tim in the middle. I'll see you on the next video.